How's the impact of Power of the Elements going on the market, the metagame, just honestly everything right now? I wanted to talk about how Power of the Elements has been going on the market because, you know, the, the community always has the consensus of, you know, holding booster sets is a joke, you know, there's always this stigmata about holding sealed product um, overall, just like looking at how the set goes. Now, we did talk about that this was projected to be the hottest set of the year, usually right behind um, is like Megatons next, so you kind of got to counterbalance that out, you know, when you have such a power set like this compared to, you know, good reprint sets. There's always going to be that discrepancy, but this set changed the metagame. I, I shouldn't need to tell you that. Like, Sprite and Cheer Elements, <laughs> this set was Rise of the Duelist, Electric Boogaloo for us in terms of things. So, and you know what the sad part about this set is? Th this set has only been rising in value over time because you know why Sprite Blues still might have an $85 price tag? The tier elements stuff, or tier elements, has only gone up. All right, I've been seeing field spells selling at the 93 to the $97 range, which means that could they actually spill over and hit an unprecedented $100 a copy? Yes, they can. Um, you got to remember, this set sets the stage for one of the most toxic decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is the Ishizu Tier Elements deck. A lot of people are looking at like the crazy interactions with this. You know, currently, when you look at the deck pre-Ishizu stuff, what you see is this deck that is a little bit more RNG-based. You know, players look at like the milling aspect of it with Pepega Ruler, and a lot of people look at like, how can we make this less RNG-based, you know? And that's like the grand race right now is to try try to make tier laments stable pre this. So what, what are you telling me? Pre Ishizu, the deck is a tier one deck. And what you're telling me is this set sets the stage for an entirely different scale of decks in upcoming sets. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen. And that's actually what you're seeing here. It's, it's not very often that you see a product drop a theme in a core set. I, I gotta say that there, because there will always be times where we'll see a theme be dropped in like a side set, Rika, uh, Evil Twins, and that will get power-ups along the way, but like their core support was way back when, and you know, upteen bumbles go in some side set, but it's not very often that you see a tier one deck come out of the woodwork here and then just get upgraded with an entire new sub theme of support into them. I, I actually, I can't think of a time where we've had, you know, this crazy deck besides, you know, the, the, the very few examples where you get one or two new cards that add into them, but it's not often where you get this one powerful theme that gets a new secondary theme and you shove them together and you maintain like that power scale integrity to raise the ceiling even further beyond. Like, I can't think of anything with that. So how how else is the, the set going? Well, right now, Sprite has been doing its little thing where, hi, I'm Sprite, I'm the most dominant dog in the game right now. You know, it, it still entertains me that people are looking at Sprite and they're going, no, Sprite is not the best deck in the room. Well, if the deck is kerning over 50, 60% of these event tops. You know, you look at a regional, you see five of the top eight are Sprite. Okay, so that means that the deck isn't, you know, borderline obsessively good. That doesn't mean that if the deck is turning over that high representation, then maybe the deck is consistent. And while there will always be an outlier out here to do things, the amount of like consistent turnover is what you got to worry about, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that, but at the end of the day, if you're looking at like the impact of this set and you're like, no, Sprite isn't the best deck. Well, turnover data will disagree with you. All right. Conversions tell me a different story here. And that's that's kind of like the sad thing at the end of the day here is people are in denial that Sprite is not the best, but conversion data tells me differently. I don't know if you guys have played against Sprite or anything like that, but trust me when I say this, that deck is still one of the most annoying. And trust me, you should have gotten your feet wet at this point against that deck. And if you haven't, well, boy, oh boy, you chose a good format to set out here. So 
How's sealed product going for this set? Well, to be honest with you, sealed product has been in near the $80 range for a hot second. You can obviously buy like boxes without the packs in it for, what is it, I think $75. But if you're looking at a box, they're all like 78 with change. So after shipping, you're still looking at that. That is one of the highest maintained products in a, in a while. Divo boxes went down the crapper, all right? Duelist pack boxes. You could buy Duelist pack water boxes for $25 ladies and gentlemen all right now that's a set that i would have invested in to hold if i can pick up booster boxes for 25 dollars of a set okay sure all right it doesn't matter like long term short term that's just a price point that i look at and i'm like yeah that's really good um now the rest of this set but besides like the top two this set had some other extreme outliers in it which ended up being you know ultimate slayer like the other interesting thing that really was brought to the table was just the power ceiling for Ultimate Slayer. Like, Ultimate Slayer did not flop in the TCG. Like, Ultimate Slayer has been a very big side deck card for a lot of people. And I, I love like, reading the comments because people are like, I'm not going to pay money for Ultimate Slayer. Your competitive player base did spend money on Ultimate Slayer. They didn't care about your opinion that you didn't want to pick it up. People looked at the card, said, all right, we're going to have these because I need to have these for competitive play. Once again, outliers, ladies and gentlemen, they, they tend to do their thing. So you got two powerful themes and what a lot of people would deem one of the best side deck cards in modern era Yu-Gi-Oh. You really do love to see like that level of change there. Now, this set also brought like the Rika Sun Avalon stuff to the table. You know, we just actually saw the Rika stuff tear through um, the last big event or so here. And a lot of people like, see, I told you, I told you, Robbie, the plant stuff was the good stuff within Power of the Elements. You just didn't see it. Yeah, okay. Power of the Elements also brought an FTK to the table as well. You don't hear a lot of people talking about the FTK, but if you go to your locals and you're not aware of what that FTK does, you're going to lose to it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, one of the other big things that this set brought to the table was Exosister. Look at the current state of Exosister. Look at, look at me. Look at me. Look at me, Exosister players. You guys have one regional win under your belt. You guys have pretty much failed at this point in time. It's actually kind of sad to see because Exosister was projected to, you know, maintain like this huge presence, you know, like this huge triangle format. Man, let me tell you about this huge triangle format that's coming. It didn't didn't impact at all. <laughs> all right, like actually it was quite the opposite. Exosisters just got blown off the face of the planet. Like it's actually kind of sad. Um, but the the biggest thing, I guess, that really impacted things here was just Garuda. You know, the fact that we now have a super poly target within the format that can just exist. And by just exist, I mean, this card's pure existence warps the game. Like, a lot of players haven't fully grasped how busted the new super poly target is, man. Like, trust me when I say this, that card is amazing. All right? Just being able to main deck super poly as an out in the format is so good to me, all right? Like, <laughs> oh, people actually out here looking at this going, no, I don't I don't think it's that good. No, it is that good. Um, other bangers, I mean, the Draco Utopian Auras have settled down to like five bucks. Instant Contacts has been holding on to the $5 mark. Um, Mathemech took off with Circular. Like, in terms of like power scaling for this set in the game right now, it's pretty much in it's done everything it intended to do. It definitely gave the best power-ups that we needed to see in the right departments that we needed to see it. It laid down new groundwork and broke the foundation for the previous metagame. You know, let's be honest, we were a little bit bored of how things were going with Sword Soul running around, and, uh, you know, I'll say it. It's amazing to see what a, <laughs> one of the best sets of the year can do to the previous metagame. Like, I, I do feel bad for all the old players out here that were trying stuff, but yeah, power creep is a heck of a thing. So guys, please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you're Make sure you guys smash the subscribe button and tell me about your power of the elements experience so far. Patrons, thank you.
<laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.